Good morning and welcome to everyone joining us to the International Scientific Conference Societal Interactions, Rethinking Modern Issues, organized by SMK University of Applied Sciences. My name is Gida Wojciechowskine. I am a lecturer at SMK University of Applied Sciences and Vilnius University as well. I will moderate today's plenary session. So, where does the focus go? In today's rapidly changing world, many of us experience feelings of uncertainty and complexity. This sentiment has been captured by Mr. Cassio, an American anthropologist and futurist, in his concept of Benny World, one that is brittle, anxious, nonlinear, and incomprehensible. These characteristics challenge us to rethink our approach to life, social values, and how we engage both personally and organizationally. Our conference today responds to these challenges. We are here to bring together minds from academia, science, business, both from Lithuania and across the world. I am excited to hear the diverse perspectives, innovative ideas that we'll share today. Dear guests, dear presenters, dear listeners, let's start our plenary session. For the opening speech, I would like to invite the director of SNK University of Applied Sciences, Victoria Polubinskine. Dear Victoria, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, dear our guests, dear participants. Good morning, colleagues from SMK. Today is the great day when we should celebrate knowledge, innovations, and uh, networking. Why? I would like to emphasize these three different points. First of all, I think that everyone who will speak in this conference, create new knowledge. In this creating process, in this implementation new knowledge process, we create new innovations. And the catalyzator of this creating new things process, we have networking, relationship, and sometimes friendship in the science area, and it helps us a lot. So this day is day when you will present your new knowledge, new innovations, and I hope you create new relationships. Also, I would like to say thank you for everyone for your time, which you dedicate this day to SMK, to this conference. And also, so I would like to say Thank you for the members of our organization committee. Uh, they put a lot of effort for organizing this conference. So let's do it. Let's create new knowledge, new innovations, new friendships, and have a great and efficient day. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria, for your welcoming speech, for your warm words. Dear audience, um, we are moving to the next speaker, Mircea Georgescu from Alexandru Ion Cusa University of Iași, Romania. Professor Mircea Georgescu is going to talk on the topic, Assessing the Performance of European Countries in Innovation and Empirical Investigation. Professor Georgescu will tell us how, after the pandemic, a new societal trend has emerged, characterized by a focus on innovation-driven growth. Dear Professor Mircea, 
the floor is yours. Dear audience, because of the technical uh, issues, we uh, changed uh, a little bit uh, our program. And now I am inviting you to uh, listen our next presentation um, of Evgenia Dechtiare from EK University of Applied Sciences from Latvia. Evgenia Dechtiare has recorded a presentation titled Higher Education in Benny World a need for change, where she will present the results of research conducted along with colleagues Yulia Mironova, Larissa Turusheva, and Kristina Uzule. The survey shows what changes are crucial in higher education. Please welcome Collective Work. Hello, dear conference organizers and participants, ECA University of Applied Science extends our warmest greetings to all of you who are joining the International Scientific Conference on Societal Interactions Rethinking Modern Issues. It is a pleasure to have such a diverse and knowledgeable group of individuals coming together to discuss and explore the pressing challenges and opportunities in our rapidly changing world. As we embark on this intellectual journey, may our shared experience and dialogues lead to innovative solutions and to a deeper understanding of the complex issues facing our society. 
Together, we can reshape the way we view the modern world and its challenges. So let me wish you a successful and enriching conference experience. Now, please let me start with my presentation. The topic is higher education in bunny world, a need for change. In recent decades, our world has changed significantly. Since the introduction of VUCA concept in the 90s, it has helped us understand the challenges we face. However, with the evolving global landscape, we need to ask, is VUCA still the dominant framework or is the bunny world becoming the primary model for our modern existence? Bunny reflects the increasing fragility, heightening anxiety, unpredictable dynamics and complex nature of our challenges. To navigate this bunny world, we must rethink our strategies, adapt our approaches and develop new coping mechanisms. The traditional tools and frameworks that worked in the VUCA world may no longer be sufficient. Innovation faces unique challenges in the bunny world, where ideas and technologies are fragile and require constant reassessment and high senate and anxiety underscores the need of robust risk management. Digital transformation, pandemics, global political and economic crisis have given impetus to rapid development of various sectors of the economy. The sector that seems to react to change slower than the others is higher education. The slow phase, pace of transformation might be attributed to inertness of educational system, limited financial resources, accreditation processes, methodology of teaching, etc. This results in a lower capacity of higher education institutions to compete with lifelong learning educators. The academic staff is not sufficiently motivated to respond to change either. This necessitates change in business, management, and academic processes. However, it might not always be clear for manager of Hayes what to focus on for imminent transformation. One approach to transformation in higher education might be grounded in the concept of sustainable development that are summarized in sustainable development goals, particularly in SDG 4, 8, 10. SDG 4 promotes quality education. SDG 8 focuses on decent work conditions, including productive employment, whereas SDG 10 addresses issues of equal opportunities for all. Taking these three goals together, one goal of education transformation could be formulated as follows. Education systems should transform to enhance the quality of education to contribute to the economic growth of nations, but this depends on how educational institutions are capable of creating decent work conditions and promoting productive employment, including equal opportunities for all members of the staff. This means that members of the staff should be asked about their needs and views of educational transformation because they are agents of such a transformation. That's why research typicality is related to rising need in educational innovation in order to improve human development and according national competitiveness. Research problem accordingly is a changing environment, economic and political pressure, rapid introduction of digital 
artificial intelligence including technologies, impact of COVID era that all require significant transformation of study processes and approaches in the higher education. The goal of this research was uh, to identify the perception of one group of agents of educational transformation, academic staff, in relation to imminent transformation of higher education and in order to identify needs to promote such transformation. The focus on academic staff is grounded in the idea that employees represent both the key stakeholder group and asset of a company. The research method included a survey of academic staff. To attain the goal of the research, the quantitative design was used. The research instrument was a questionnaire. 45 participants, international academic staff representatives, took part in the study, each with a longitudinal experience in teaching. The relatively low number of participants is attributed to the constraints of the current war in Ukraine, where the majority of the respondents in is working. However, this is not terminal data, as we are continuing the research on a wider international meaning, and if uh, you wish to participate in the continuation of this research, you are also very welcome. The existing data was collected anonymously on the voluntary base from May uh, 2024 to February 2023. The questionnaire was available to participants in Google Forms. Descriptive statistics was used to analyze demographic and content multiple choice questions were offered. Content analysis by keyword and frequency was used to analyze open-ended questions. Most of the surveyed admit that the study process will definitely change in the nearest future. For example, will, trans will transform into fully hybrid. To, to the need to acquire uh, additional skills such as language and IT was acknowledged by the highest proportion of respondents, 42%. Lack uh, of students' uh, motivation was the second most serious issue mentioned by 29% of respondents. A notable proportion of respondents did not see any problems related to student motivation, while the issues in uh, teacher-student communication were highlighted by other respondents. Only 5% of respondents considered the hybrid model of education is a problem. The area that was selected by the highest number of respondents included modern teaching methods, 16%, which was followed by human resource management in higher education. Only 9% of respondents thought they had to improve their competencies of using remote teaching tools. The lowest number of respondents selected answer communication with students and answer design of study curricula according to the EU requirements. There were also other competencies identified in the answer option other and included uh, languages and IT skills, knowledge of lifelong learning approaches, skills of writing for scientific purposes, skills related in uh, participation in international projects, and skills also preventing professional burnout. To the question, in your experience, how has the profile of the typical student changed comparing to the student of uh, 20 years ago, the vast majority of the respondents indicated a significant change in the student profile since 2002. Only a small number of respondents, just 6%, did not observe any 
teatro. On the question, what changes do you think will take place in the higher education? Uh, this was open question and answers are summarized in the table. Um, most of the respondents indicated that higher education will become more customized, which was followed by the following answers. Decrease in the number of higher education institutions, decrease in study programs, use of new technologies in higher education, remote education, increasing use of lifelong learning approaches, higher competition on the higher education institutions market, more practical study programs, and more practical orientation of uh, trainings. To summarize the discussion, this study aimed to determine areas of changing educational needs. It was observed that the current and immediate transformation of higher education is related to the increasing competition of higher education markets, decreasing number of students and academic staff, financial challenges, new technologies, political implications, and overall economic instability. Since the study involved academic staff, it would be meaningful to conduct a new research that examines whether higher education management considers the acquisition of dimension skills by academic personnel necessary for enhancing the overall competitiveness of the institution. Finally, as a culmination of an extensive study, it would be worthwhile to develop a model that specifies how the methodology of knowledge transfer in higher education should evolve, taking into account the changing profile of the modern student, their needs and needs of the teaching staff. To conclude, we can say that to be able to function in the Bani world in the view of academic staff, they should enhance their IT skills, language, scientific writing, burnout preventing skills, embrace methods of lifelong learning, modern teaching methods, and human resource management skills. These changes encompass various factors including the implementation of design thinking approach, an agile education process, and the introduction of modern teaching approaches. However, it is crucial to consider most important element, the human factor. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish you a very productive day. And the Eco Scientific Institution is inviting everyone to participate uh, in our research, to collaborate in scientific writing. So you can find my contacts uh, in the first slide. We are welcome. Thank you very much, conference organizers, for inviting us, for inviting me. I will be happy to participate in next events. Thank you and wish you an excellent conference. And we say thank you, Yevgenia. Thank you, colleagues from ICA, University of Applied Sciences from Latvia. Indeed, collaboration in the Bani world is so welcome. We will keep in touch with you to follow up our partnership. Now I see that um, our keynote speaker Professor Mircea Georgescu is already on online. Welcome. Uh, uh, professor joining us from Alexandru Ion Cusa University of Iași, Romania. Professor Georgescu is an esteemed scholar in the field of business informatics, information and communication technologies, and e-governance. Today, uh, he will be sharing his insights on the topic assessing the performance of European countries in innovation and empirical investigation. Let's look forward to this let's look forward to this relevant presentation.
deploys you. Hello again. Uh, I, I hope now the technical conditions are good. Good morning from Yash, Romania. Sorry for the problems, but the distance between uh, Romania and Lithuania probably could be a problem sometimes. So my name is Mitya Georgescu. I am a PhD professor in the Alexandru Ioncuza University of Yash, uh, the oldest university in Romania. Today I will try to present uh, a paper uh, regarding the performance of European Union countries only in innovation. So I will try to show you my empirical investigation regarding this subject, the performance of uh, European countries in innovation. Of course, I have a motivation. Why to do such a survey? Why to, uh, to make such a paper? Romania as you can see in my slide, it's a small country. And the neighbors, Republic of Moldova, Ukraine, Hungary, Serbia, Bulgaria, are not so powerful if we are talking about uh, economical and um, political systems. So one of the weapons of my country could be innovation. 
So this is maybe the most important reason I've created this paper to, sh to show to our rulers why the innovation could be so important for our country. And also another important motivation is sometimes we are trying to copy uh, models from other countries, from other European countries that are very good in that area. For example, let's say Italy, it's a very good example in innovation or Netherlands. So let's copy that model. I will try to show in my paper that it's not enough to, to copy a model. You need to look to many models and take pieces from that models. Maybe you take a piece from the model of, uh, model of Netherlands, but for the education innovation, you need to take a piece from France or for, uh, I don't know, for a political system uh, to innovate it, you need to take a part from Czechia. Uh, the motivation is to look inside, to look to inside the models. And I will show you immediately this. So uh, probably all of us, we agree that post-pandemically, innovation driven growth has become a new trend in the evolution of society uh, everywhere, not in a kind of field of activity, let's say uh, education or industry, everywhere in all the fields of activities and in all countries of the world, innovation, it's a new trend of evolution of our society. But it's necessary to say that we have different approaches in different European countries and especially in, in the different European unions countries. So we need to show the innovation weaknesses and the innovation strengths from a country to another. For this, I analyze the European Union member states in terms, I repeat, of innovation, innovation efficiency or inefficiency, taking into consideration the Global Innovation Index 2022 report. So my, uh, my uh, uh, paper is structured in four parts. Uh, first, a systematic literature review uh, regarding innovation in the European Union. After we've the method of data envelopment analysis, I've tried to measure the efficiency or inefficiency in terms of innovation, so the empirical demonstration, results and discussions. And uh, this part of my paper is related to the significant discrepancies between the European Union countries. And of course, final, some limitations and future directions. So if we look to the chart, to the, this chart, I've tried to put here the, um, Global Innovation Index for the years 2020, 2021, and 2022, trying to show first an important thing. In, uh, during 2020, the economies that continue to dominate the top positions in the Global Innovation Index are predominantly from the high income group. So this could indicate the ongoing concentration of top performance within this category, high income group. This is a problem. In 2002, Sweden, Netherlands, Germany, Finland, and Denmark were ranked as the top five European innovation leaders. But if we look to the level of the world, number one in the last 12 years in a row, very important, in a row, it's Switzerland. Sweden is ranked three and United States two. So which are the global leaders in innovation in 2022? If we look to the Latin America, it's Chile, Brazil, Mexico. If we look, for example, to Northern Asia and Western Asia, Israel, United Arab Emirates and Turkey. And if we come back to Europe, Switzerland, Sweden, United Kingdom. Okay, this is the situation if you are talking only about top three innovation economies by region. But if we put face to face, top three innovation economies by income group, we have um, maybe a different situation. Yes, for example, in high income, the ranking is Switzerland, United States, Sweden. If we talk about upper middle income is China, Bulgaria, Malaysia. Lower middle income is India, Vietnam, Iran. And low income is Rwanda, Madagascar, and Ethiopia. Shall we speak? or could we spend the same amount of money from the budget for research and development? Uh, for sure, no. I tried to put in, in a chart the situation uh, between 2019 uh, up to 2021. And you can see 
which amount of money is spending a country like United States of America for research and development or Japan or Germany or Republic of Korea. Com uh, and if you look to small countries, the situation, it's clear. We need more money in the government budget for innovation. So this is the movement uh, regarding the glo Global Innovation Index, uh, top, uh, top 10. Um, if you look to the countries, uh, as I said uh, before, Switzerland um, has a, a clear position. Number one, it's not changed. United States, it's uh, in some years, it's number two, number three, Sweden, number three, number two. What I'm trying to say that the, the, the countries that are strong in innovation, they remain under the years strong in innovation. So because also, um, uh, I've said this in the previous slide, they have huge budgets on uh, research and development. So my methodology is to analyze European member states in terms of innovation, efficiency or inefficiency using that method, data envelopment analysis. And I've um, performed this, that's, uh, that this uh, analysis using the DAR, academic solution. So I've put the method of data envelopment analysis in the software R, trying to obtain the results. So as we know, in the specialty literature, data envelopment analysis is a non-parametric test for measuring the efficiency or inefficiency of a decision-making unit constructed on two types of data, inputs and outputs. And I will show you more about these inputs and outputs. So the results of, on, of the DEA calculus illustrate a relative performance of similar units based on information about the extent of input reduction and or input increase in an inactive decision-making unit. So I, uh, according to this method, uh, data envelopment analysis, uh, we divided uh, in two categories um, the variables, inputs, institutions, human capital and research, infrastructure, market sophistication, business sophistication, and as outputs, knowledge and technology outputs, and creative output. Of course, we can go deeper and see what means institutions. For example, institutions means political environment, regulatory environment, business environment, and in each of these categories, we have subcategories. So we can um, make our analysis, analysis deeper to, sh to see if we have problem, let's say in Romania with the institutions, but with all type of institutions, with all type of problems, or only with the business uh, environment. For example, entrepreneurship policies and culture is the problem and not the policies for doing businesses. So it's necessary to go inside of each of uh, the variables that are inputs uh, and in each of the variables that are outputs to see where the country has problems. Have we, should we say we have problem with the human capital and research or looking inside, we will see that we have only problems with the tertiary education. We have no third tertiary education or the percentage is very low or the graduates in science and engineering, the percentage in, in the total of uh, graduates, it's very low. So it's we need to go deeper. After we have, I apply, I repeat the, the method in uh, R, uh, in 2022, uh, we have found that only nine countries of the European Union are relatively efficient in terms of innovation. That means we have already 18 countries that need to push, that need to learn. They need to learn from these nine countries. The problem is, could we take a model, I repeat, and apply it exactly in my country that is inefficient? The answer is no. If we look uh, to the method of um, DEA, we will see that according to the literature, a decision-making unit is relatively efficient only if the score value is equal with one. Higher or lower values are deemed as inefficient. And efficient units, that countries that have the value one, can be seen as optical benchmarks, benchmarks or peers for the inefficient ones. So let's look to, for example, Czechia. Czechia has the value one. So she could be a peer, a benchmark, a model for other countries that are inefficient. 
If we look to the Belgium that is in the table on, on the second row, Belgium is non-efficient and she can inspire from the model of Czechia, but better from the model of Netherlands. So we need to go now deeper and to see which part of the model of Netherlands could be applied in Belgium. The model regarding the education, the model regarding the human resources. So we need to go deeper. But I've tried also to do it for the 2023 years. The situation is, let's say, better. We have 14 countries that are relatively efficient out of 27. This is the situation in 2022. So I've tried to create this uh, chart, this graph, not chart, sorry, showing uh, who could be peer for whom. So for example, um, Netherlands could be a peer, a model for 12 countries, but look to Slovakia. Slovakia, if we're regarding to the data obtained by applying the method, it, it could not be a model for nobody from not none of the countries that are non-efficient. So it's necessary when you try to copy a model to see who is the peer or who are the peers and to go, I repeat, deeper to each of the categories and to see what can I apply, what can I copy, what can I take from this country and what can I take from this country. So. Sorry for the host, because Lithuania in my, uh, in my survey is one of the most inefficient countries in uh, uh, innovation. Lithuania, Latvia, and Greece from my study case are the most inefficient ones. So efficient countries are Netherlands in 2002, 22, Italy, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Malta, Romania, Germany, Sweden, and Slovakia, and inefficiently Lithuania, Latvia, and Greece. And I explain, um, on the previous slide, how it could be the relation between an efficient and inefficient country. This is the situation in 2023. The most important peers in 2023, it's again Italy and very interesting Malta. And if you look to the table, we can see if I am in Belgium uh, for 2023, it's better to copy more from Netherlands and less from Germany and less from Serbia. So it it's necessary, I repeat and I repeat, to go deeper and to look inside. So <clears throat> again, who are the most inefficient one uh, in 2023? Slovenia, Lithuania, and Spain. And because um, somebody could ask me, okay, Lithuania is uh, inefficient for two years uh, in a row. Why? This is the situation in 2022 for Lithuania. Lithuania was, re, um, regarding the Global Innovation Index, in the position 39 uh, in, in the world. So uh, if we look to the figures, the situation, it's not so bad in all the input variables and all the output variables. For example, in institutions, in the input institution, Lithuania, it's in the 26th. Um, um, place. But if we are looking to the knowledge and technology outputs, the global index innovation is saying that position is not so good. It's 48. Infrastructure, 45. If we go deeper to, to create a table, what are the most important strengths of Lithuania and the most important weaknesses, I repeat, talking about innovation in Lithuania, I've created this table with some strengths. For example, one of the most important strengths of Lithuania in innovation is females employed. So the percentage of females employed uh, ranked Lithuania the third place in the world that is a very, very good place. Or labor productivity growth, 14th place. Mobile application creation, 7th place in the world. ICT, information and communication technologies access, 14th place. But there are also some bad um, things or weaknesses, intellectual property payments, only they'll place 93 in, in the world. Software spending, only 92 place in the world. Domestic credit to private sector, only 85 place in the world. So we can talk and go deeper and deeper, but uh, looking to my clock, um, I've tried to be very, very fast and also because of the technical problems. So Let's say my final conclusion is never try to copy a model. Try to look inside 
and try to make uh, analyses uh, in a deeper level. Uh, not saying, okay, who is number one in innovation terms? It's Netherlands. It's very simple. Um, let's uh, let's copy the model. Let's put all the money to this um, strategy, and for sure, in I don't know two three years, we will catch. Uh, I don't know, Netherlands or Italy or other countries that are in the uh, category of efficient countries. So for sure, this is not a good way of doing things. Uh, this is my very short presentation. Sorry again for the technical uh, problems. Uh, the weather, it's not so good in Yash, so maybe it could be uh, one of the reasons that the internet is going so and so. So thank you again, and if you have time, and um, why not uh, pleasure, I invite you to come in my university in Romania, University Alexandria Ancuza of Iași, uh, the oldest university of Romania. Thank you so much, and uh, I will say you, I will say it again. Thank you for the invitation to to be a speaker in your conference. Good luck, and we hope today we have a greater network. Uh, of ideas and, uh, of course, friendship. Thank you, Professor Mircea Georgescu, for presenting your research and, of course, uh, for the invitation to your university, to Romania. Thank you. But I want to have, um, I want to have a, a brief discussion with you. Mm -hmm. So my question is, Based on your findings, what specific policy recommendations would you give to the less efficient European Union member states to boost their innovation capabilities? Okay, I will switch to one of my slides to explain. So my advice is not, I repeat, not to copy a model, because if you look uh, to the table, you can see each uh, of the inefficient countries, they have peers, but there isn't a peer 100% that could be a model. So for Austria, the best model, it's Bulgaria, but on the second place, it's not Bulgaria, it's Czechia, sorry. On, but they can copy also something from Bulgaria. So my advice is for the government of a state to look first where are the problems? In which variables? In institutions, in in human capital and research, and not trying to push all the variables. I mean, to put money also in market sophistication and trying to push in human capital and research and trying to push uh, for twenty for two thousand twenty four. Take only this human capital and research and try to push for the next two three years this indicator or for example push Q, qs survey university rankings push kaunas um, uh, applied um, uh, university of applied sciences and the rest of the universities because if you push them you can uh, receive more innovation uh, on the education area and you'll push this indicator and you you'll grow step by step. It's not possible to copy something and to apply it for two years and receive results immediately and say, I am like, I repeat, Netherlands or, or Italy. So this is my, my advice. Take only some pieces from one or two indicators and try to push them, move them, and not, not all of them. Okay, uh, Mircea Georgescu, I will share your advice uh, with the representatives <laughs> of uh, Lithuanian universities. Thank, Thank you, you so again. Much. And uh, the audience uh, now moving to the final remarks. I want to thank you all presenters and participants for your devoted attitude to this scientific conference. Our uh, next um, part of the conference will continue after a short break. We will start on the Zoom platform, half past 11, Vilnius time. Please, uh, please follow the program. You can find the Zoom link below um, in the description. Some information by, for joining sections. In order to enter your preferred conference section, please press uh, 
a zoom link below, which will allow you to choose one of three sections, rooms. Section one uh, will discuss education and healthcare. Section two will discuss economic growth and sustainability. Section three will discuss business and digitalization. We look forward to hearing from all of you. Your contributions are invaluable in shaping the discourse on critical issues raging, raging from the creative economy, organizational transformations, health and wellness trends, to the intricacies of digitalization in our rapidly evolving world. Thank you for being with us. On behalf of conference organizers, I'd like to express our gratitude to your impact fostering resilience and meaningful engagement in, in our communities, in our organizations, creating, creating a more comprehensible and navigable world. Till next meetings online.